So our next issue is the media and entertainment issue, and I think that your piece is going to be really fun for this. Well, this has been a passion of mine. I spent years as the photographer for a local theater company, mm -hmm. and I kept saying to them, you know, I'm an architect, and I took theater courses when I was in college. And I approached directors. Finally, one director took me up mm -hmm. on my offer to design the set for her show. Sounds like a natural fit. Well, I, so it was interesting because I designed that show in AutoCAD okay. using 3D tools because okay. these were set pieces that were quite large. The biggest one was 8 feet long and uh, almost 12 feet tall that moved in on uh, basically a platform with wheels on the bottom, what in theater they refer to as a wagon. Sure. And then a director approached me to design the set for August Osage County, which is a show Great that show. involves a multi-story house, uh, which we had to build on a stage that's less than 14 feet tall. So it's kind of hard to build a multi-story building on, uh, that fits within a 14-foot height. Right. <laughs> she was very concerned when she saw my design that members of the audience would have limited sight lines. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I realized, wait a minute, Revit's a great tool for building houses, building any architectural project, and a set is essentially a three-dimensional building that's built inside the confines of another building. And so I did that set design using Revit okay. and modeled the entire auditorium, including all 194 seats, so that if she said, well, what does it look like from this seat, I could literally put the camera in that seat and show her what it looked like. <laughs> I'm sure that quelled that argument. It really did quickly. quell that <laughs> argument. So the next director approached mm -hmm. me to design a show called Noises Off, okay. which is a really interesting show because it's a show within a show, essentially. It's a uh, dysfunctional British theater troupe that's performing a show, and during Act 1, you see them performing it. Mm -hmm. And during Act 2, the entire set has, re has revolved 180 degrees, and now you're watching the bedlam that's going on backstage. And then Act 3, the set revolves back around again, so you're again watching it from the front, okay. but now you know how dysfunctional this group <laughs> is. Well, the problem here was, again, it's a two-story set, mm -hmm. in a set in a stage that has a limitation of a little less than 14-foot height, and now this two-story set has to revolve. Not a simple task. No, and not a task that I could do entirely in Revit. Okay. Because Revit's great for building a building, but not a building that moves. And so to work out the geometry, I again went back to AutoCAD and worked out all of the geometry in two dimensions to make sure that this set could truly turn, because the, the director threw down the gauntlet. She said, we've done this show before. And the last time we had to break the set up into three pieces mm -hmm. in order to be able to spin it. And at that point I said, no, there's got to be a way right. that I can build this set in one piece so that they don't have to take it apart, turn the individual pieces, and then put it back together. So I think the result was, was entertaining, uh, so much so that uh, they kept the curtain open and the audience stayed to watch three people come out and turn a 3,000 pound set and the entire set could be turned in less than 30 seconds. Oh, that's fascinating. So it was a lot of fun. That's the great. set design won some awards. Oh, and really? so I'm going to do an article that explains that whole process. Oh, that's fantastic. And I'm sure there's going to be lots of images. Lots of images of both the set design in AutoCAD and Revit. And since I'm the photographer for the theater company, <laughs> What Images of ask. the actual performance as <laughs> oh, well. Wonderful. Well, we are looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an interesting piece. All right. Well, thank you, David. You're welcome.